Don't do it now, it's easy. Richard Murphy School is a kindergarten through grade eight school. It's part of the Boston Public Schools. We have 900 students who go to school here. When I became principal of the Murphy School in 1999, 54% of our students at grade four were performing in the failing category on our state uh, standards-based testing. The process has been really interesting in getting the kids to read. My first mandate was to work on uh, those kinds of things that improve performance of students. We have a system for professional development in this school. Part of it is collaborative coaching and learning. Part of it is a system by which we meet as teams and work together collaboratively on our work. We have teachers who will work as coaches within the school, share their knowledge with other teachers. At this point, we have found two missing angles. There's one left. How are we going to figure out the third angle? Because I really want to use this as a resource. Part of my role is to support new teachers in all things related to elementary mathematics. Most of the students only depended on that 90 degree angle and they saw that as their only resource. Could we show them that this is 180 degrees? In this case, teachers had taught a very challenging lesson content-wise yesterday and there were some questions around where to go next with the students. Okay, what fits in there? What do you know? And then go back and say, all right, how can we use that to figure out what we don't know? Many of you got started on this yesterday, but now's the perfect opportunity to go back and to prove it using the resources that you have. We decided to create a chart together that they could refer back to as a resource for finding new angles. And I'm already seeing a difference in the way they're approaching other polygons. They're making more connections now based on their experiences. I think once teachers experience the collaboration, the fact that I am not alone in doing this very hard work of getting kids to standards, they uh, really love this kind of an approach. They like okay, working so together. They like that. the teamwork. I think I've learned more from visiting other teachers' classrooms than I ever did from a book. It's an opportunity to come outside of your little classroom and be with people who are going through the same struggles and who may have something that, that they can offer you or you might have something that you can offer them. The kinds of instruction that we use now focus on seeing where each child starts. We test every child as soon as they come to us. And then we set a goal for that student. By mid-year we expect this child to be able to be reading at such and such a level. And we live by that. Can you read that word for me? Timber. Timber. Very good. Okay, so let's take a look at page 11. You see a tiger is a large cat. It looks like a Tasmanian tiger as well. Look, this Tasmanian I work tiger. as a literacy coordinator. I provide professional development for teachers as well as provide one-on-one -on -one coaching. Okay, let's see if we can figure out what that word means. As we learn to think about our children as learners, we also have to think about teachers as learners. And just as kids are all on a different point in their development or in their learning curves, teachers are in that same position. He tends to sort of get ahead of himself sometimes, and so I wasn't sure whether he really did know the word or he was just... Or he wasn't using or the he visual wasn't information. Hurt. Exactly. So um, that was puzzling to me. You know, if he comes to a word where he doesn't know what it is, he just stops. So even saying something mm -hmm. like, why did you, you stop? stop? Right using self-monitoring and mm -hmm. checking, you know, mm -hmm. like saying things like, what's wrong? Let's look at grade five, Let's see. We use data in many ways at the Murphy School. We identify those individual students who are not performing as well as they should for um, additional support. Three number problems. That's we say, um, what is it that we need to learn? If you look here, more than 35% of our students did not get this question correct. So I'd like to do an item analysis of that and spend some time really digging deep in that question. Our students were really struggling on this. Well, why were they struggling? Did we teach it? When in the year did we teach it? We can also identify teacher strengths. We had one writing teacher who was consistently scoring very well. So it was as simple as someone asking her at one of these meetings, what are you doing? How are you teaching this? Because Whatever you're doing, you're on to something and we want to know what it is. 
figure out what is the table, what information is the table going to give you, okay? What is the question asking me to do? So many kids like will write an awesome open response, but if it doesn't directly answer the initial question, you know, it's setting them up for disaster. They're very good at looking at it very quickly and saying, this is the answer, this is what I have to do. But applying that to the second, to the third step, it, they, see, they sometimes don't see the connection. How do you figure what the question is um, and how do you get the main idea? What's going on in here right now is a cross-content collaborative and coaching and learning. Um, so there are a group of sixth grade teachers um, from history, science, mathematics, English language arts, and they're coming together to puzzle through a text we have decided will give us some strategies to improve reading instruction in all content areas. I think that one thing that would really benefit us is to really keep track of the types of questions that we're asking in kids. You know, they think if they don't know the answer right off the bat, that they don't know how to do it. So teaching them that it is okay to puzzle through a text or a math problem or a science experiment, that, you know, grappling with ideas is what they're there to do. The primary tool that I use to keep abreast of learning in the school is what I call a learning walk. The kind of evidence I look for is what are the walls telling me, what work of the students is displayed on the walls. Used other equations. Did you try another strategy? After you, after you do As I ask children to explain their thinking, what is that telling me about their learning? In that way, I know what kinds of conversations to have with uh, teachers. I can also bring my uh, feedback to the team of teachers and to the school as a whole. How are you going to approach the question? The first thing you've got to do as you try and respond to this, what are you going to do? Rizzo? Restate the question. Restate the question. So that means you're going to take a very, very close look at what the question is actually asking. You have to the results are very, very worthwhile. They're very powerful. We're looking at uh, uh, students performing in the advanced and proficient levels. We had very few in 1999. Now most of our children are performing in that level. Very, very few are performing in the failing category, whereas most of them were performing in the failing category. And this goes for both math and literacy. So for us, that's an indication that the approach we're using is working. We're seeing more and more of our students achieve. One of the things that makes teaching here rewarding is that there are a lot of high expectations for faculty and as well as for children. I think that the students see us as learners. We're coming in here to learn from you and we're coming in to learn from your teacher or the coach. I think that's helped the students by giving them a model. When the students aren't understanding what they're reading, you know, it's not just me solving this problem. I've got 10 people in there that are helping me solve the problem. Talking about the work with the teachers makes me better prepared for my classroom teaching. We need to be able to look at what we are doing day to day in the classroom. Yes, the work is hard, but it can be done. And I say, I think that's the basic message of the Murphy School. If people get together, if people set high goals, if people are willing to do all those extra things, that you can have high achievement for urban students.